some of the things we've been talking about. If you'll remember, we've kind of walked through this, this, uh, this picture from the scripture of how Jesus makes disciples. And he does it in, uh, in stages or phases. It's uh, come and see, it's first. Come and follow me. Come and be with me. And then remain in me. And we're looking, we're, we've been looking in, in the middle of the come and follow me section. Right now we're going to go back, though. we're going to revisit something uh, tonight that we, that we looked at when we first began this study. If you would turn in your Bibles to John chapter 1, verses 35 to 39. Jesus' first response to someone who, who demonstrated a desire to know more about him. <clears throat> Follow along as I read John 1, 35 to 39. The next day John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. That's John the Baptist now. Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you stay?" He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Let's, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're so grateful for our Savior and grateful that he uh, calls men and women and boys and girls unto himself. We recognize, Lord, that grace is free and discipleship is costly. We cannot earn grace. We cannot unearn grace. But we recognize from your word that all who are saved by grace are called upon to be disciples who make disciple makers. And therefore, we must, we must slay those comforts we have that would hinder us. We must slay those fears we have that would hinder us. We must slay... Uh, any misgivings we have, we must, we must not listen to the enemy of our souls who would discourage us. Help us to follow Jesus day by day. Purposing to be more and more like him, growing increasingly into the image of Christ. And at the same time, inviting others to come and see, to come and follow, to come and be with him. So help us to look at this tonight and, and glean from it and appreciate more the disciple-making ministry of our Savior who came, lived, died, and rose again that he might be the Lord of the dead and the living. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We said to you when we first looked at this, and if you look, if you study Jesus uh, as he moved, as recorded in the Gospels, that he did some things. He asked questions. He, he does it here. What do you want? What is it you seek? And we said that at the time that it's, <clears throat> it's through engaging people and asking questions and listening that you begin to find out where their heart is. If you listen long enough, you'll find out what their needs are. Jesus had a way of, of provoking curiosity. And he had a way of laying out things, and we've, we've traced this out. I'm not going to revisit all this tonight, but he had a way of, of laying out things for them so that they were not unsure about what they were getting into if they were to align themselves with him. <clears throat> he wasn't like so many contemporary evangelicals seem to do to looking for the, the quick fix, the shortcut, the seal the deal. That wasn't Jesus never operated that way. That whole notion of evangelism is 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 modern uh, And it has no, it has no, 
anchor in the Word of God. Jesus did not, he didn't make disciples that way. He would invite them, as he does here, come and see. And they did. These are two of John the Baptist's disciples who had enough confidence in, in the ministry of John the Baptist that when he pointed Jesus out and said, Behold the Lamb of God, then they wanted to know Jesus better. We've been telling you as we work through that that that's a good place to start with people. Come and see. Come and see the Come and see the family of God that I worship with. Just an invitation. There's nothing, there's nothing shallow. There's nothing superficial. There's nothing unbiblical about inviting people to attend services with you, to attend Bible studies, to, to attend whatever is happening as the body of Christ. Just invite people into it that they get to taste and see what's going on. It's non-threatening. We said years ago that that we need to come up with a, with a dynamic of encountering people so that they could, they could have a sense of belonging uh, before they became, before they become Christians. They could, they could connect to us and, and really experience from us, which I think people do when they come, the hospitality that is shown here. But they not have to jump through hoops to be accepted at some level by us. Jesus does this here. He didn't check their pedigree. He didn't, he didn't ask them, well, what do you believe about me? He simply invited them to come and see. And that's what we're doing. And I want you to notice something here because Brother Norman mentioned it this morning and it's, have you ever noticed in the scriptures about Jesus and meals? Now he said, to these the disciples like this, I don't have, where do you stay? Well, I don't have any place. I don't, you know, a fox has its, its burrows. The birds have their nests. I, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. There is no place. Like, I don't have a residence. So you would think, well, well, then how would he ever invite people to eat with him? Because we've said that's one of the things you do. You, you open up your heart and your, your home to people and say, come, come have a meal with us. Come have dessert with us. Come spend some time. I want to spend time with you. Those, those kind of things take time. But here's what he did that's very interesting. He invited himself to people's homes to have a meal with them. And we see in Mark chapter 2, occasion he may have been invited. The different gospel accounts tell us things about it, but we know this much. After he, had, after he went out and, and beside the sea, he passed by and he saw Levi, who we know as Matthew, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. He's a, he's a tax agent. He said to him, follow me, and then he left. He got up and followed what he, what he was doing. He left it and followed Jesus. And the next paragraph tells us in verse 15, and as he Jesus reclined that table in his, that is Levi, or Matthew Levi's house. Many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes and the Pharisees said, isn't it wonderful that he's making inroads among the tax collectors and the sinners? That's not what they said. <laughs> Look at your text. That's not what they said. The religious leaders when they saw this, that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard it. He responded, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. The implied parenthesis there is, I came not to call the self-righteous. I came to call sinners, people who, who know they have a need. That something is wrong, that there's, there's not a connection between them and God, and they, they know that, but they, they want that at some level. So you see that. But look over at Luke 19 with me. 
Now you know this story. You, if you grew up in church, you were taught this story. You were taught the song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. We, we sang that growing up. You may have been exposed to that growing up. But notice what he does here. Look at verse chapter 19 of Luke. In verse 5. When Jesus came to the place where this, where this man who was small of stature, he was short when he climbed up in the tree so he could see Jesus passing by. Jesus comes to the place. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. For I must stay at your house today. He invited himself over. As you read down, and of course, he, uh, he did, as Jesus said, he came down, he received him joyfully, they, uh, and when they saw it, they, you know who they are, they all grumbled. He's gone in to be the guest. Now look, folks, when you lay this gospel account side by side, Mark 2 is early in Jesus' ministry. Luke 19 is late in his ministry. And they haven't changed their attitude. The religious leaders have not changed their attitude about it. He's gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And you know the rest of the story. Zacchaeus was overcome by Jesus' invitation. Probably converted because the, Jesus says in, in verse 9, Today salvation has come to this house. Now some commentators will say that he was saying that he himself, he is salvation, and he come to this house. But it more probably is, he's talking about the fruit of salvation here. Since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Mark 2, I didn't come to call the righteous but sinners to repent. And Luke 19, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Those who, you know, what are we doing tonight? We're simply practicing with shoe leather the come and see principle you may meet people outside when you go you may meet them when you, if you walk up on their steps or, or hang something uh, close on their door or on the gate they may see you and you'll get to tell them this is what this is about but if you don't see them you're leaving behind an invitation that basically says come and see. Come and eat with us. Come and share a meal with the family of Bethel Baptist Church. We invite you. We want you to be our special guest. We expect nothing of you except your presence. We would love to have you physically there to be with us. And it is this principle. And we'll have the opportunity next Sunday, Lord willing, we do our work here and we pray going out and we pray after we've come back and, and just pray that God will, will honor the desires, give us the desires of our heart. Lord, every, every home we hang one of these on at the door. We want this family. If they, if they don't know you, we want this family. We want to engage them at some level. Have, find an entry point where we can love them and show them the gospel and share the gospel with them. Not interested. We're not interested if folks already go to another church. If it's an evangelical church and they're faithful there, God bless you. We're not fishing anybody else's tank. But we're going to be very specific and cast a net over 388 homes tonight. Believing that there's some people that are going to get this invitation who respond to it. And we'll have the opportunity next Sunday to eat with them. To share our food with them. To share life together in just a short time compass of time to hear them to listen to them last year when we did this there was a woman who brought her mother and it was fascinating this woman did not stop talking in fact it got embarrassing one point because her poor mother couldn't get a word in edgewise this woman was talking so much but all we just listened we just listened and we listened and we asked questions and we listened I think you would be surprised if you polled people how many people would tell you 
nobody listens to me. Nobody listens. And Jesus taught his people to have a sympathizing ear. He loved, mark this down, he loved to share a meal with sinners. We must cultivate that love ourselves. We've got to learn to love to eat with sinners. Otherwise, they will, they will sniff us out that our come and see is not really that sincere. In other words, they'll know, just getting around us, whether we did this as a stunt to try to sort of our, our, our membership drive or whether we did it because we have a true interest in this neighborhood just south of us, wanting to discover needs. Under God, to the best of the ability He's given us, resources to try to meet needs. And pray for these things. They'll know. And yet it's an opportunity we have while we still have the freedom to do it. To cover a lot of ground. Think about what it would take. If we walked out here tonight and said, okay, between now and next Sunday, we're going to make contacts at 388 homes somewhere. We wouldn't do it. Couldn't. But by coming here tonight and saying, okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm buying in. We can go out. Door to door. Not soliciting. Not give me something. No. Inviting. Inviting. Not pigeonholing. Inviting. Winsomely inviting. Most of the inviting tonight will be done by the door hanger you leave on their doorknob, on the little thing in their mailbox. You can't put them in the mailbox. That's against the law, but you can hang them from the mailbox if they have those little curved areas for the newspaper. Some on the gate because there'll be a dog on the inside. We did this last year. We encountered some pets that were outside. You can hang it on their gate. Inviting. Inviting. Praying as you go. You've heard of prayer walking. This is prayer door hanging. All right? You pray as you go. Lord, I don't know the spiritual condition of the people in this home, but I hang this believing that you can use this as a tool, as a means for us to open to them perhaps for them to open to us so that we can share the gospel with them. That's the goal. That's the goal. To get, to show the gospel and share the gospel. And we're following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ when we do this. Who said the first response to anyone who showed any interest to him, come and see. Come and see. We've taught it to you. We've discussed it. We've challenged one another to do it and, and, and we get reports back from some who have done this, thank the Lord. But now tonight we've come here intentionally with the purpose, with the agenda of going to do this. Come and see. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, let us not despise things like this. Help us to stay out of the two ditches of thinking it's silly and meaningless because we're not in confronting people with the truth claims of Jesus or the other ditch that says it's a waste of time. Help us to do this tonight believing. Believing. That you can work when we're not there. That we can leave an invitation and we don't have to cajole and connive and convince people. We can invite and you can work in their hearts. And so Lord, even as we go tonight, I pray that you would give us the desires of our hearts. That you'd search our hearts, make sure our desires are biblical and noble, but you would give us the desires of our hearts to see some penetration 
into the neighborhood south of us and that we would have the opportunity next Sunday uh, if not in the service time at least at the meal time to bless and encourage and love our neighbors and that you would use that to grip some in this neighborhood as they see the love we have for one another and they hear of the love we have for you and, the, and they see and experience the sincerity of our kindness toward them that you would use that as a, a way to open the door for the gospel to be shared. And Lord, even as we pray that, we pray the same for those who live around us in the various neighborhoods we represent. That they too <clears throat> would taste and see the goodness of the Lord through an encounter with us. A compelling witness. And that we want be silent, but rather obey our Lord and invite people to come and see, creating an entry point to the spiritual life of Bethel and to the gospel message we believe and proclaim. Watch over everyone who's involved in this tonight, Lord. Keep us safe and from harm, we pray, and let us do this with a sense of gladness and when we have finished a sense of purpose that we, what we've done though small in the eyes of some uh, brings a smile from heaven and captures something of the spirit of our Savior reminding us Lord that somebody somewhere along the line in our lives invited us to come and see and we must do the same to others and we ask it in Jesus name for his sake Amen.